Hey, how's it going? In this video, I want to take a look at a uh, new so to say, or perhaps uh, uh, not necessarily up to a standard compared to your other opportunities or technologies within the market. But uh, if anything, that uh, worth taking a look at uh, some of the potential there when it comes to different uh, battery technologies. In this video, I want to take a look at sodium ion batteries and uh, what this technology is. Uh, sodium ion batteries are a type of rechargeable battery technology that has again generated significant interest in recent years. They consider it uh, to be a potential alternative to lithium ion batteries. It's currently uh, some of those batteries are being used for a variety of applications owning uh, to severe advantages such as abundance of sodium so perhaps you would have access to more natural resources but there's uh, some of those here so I'll try to find more information about uh, <laughs> uh, why people would not necessarily use those compared to other alternatives within the market right Co uh, cost effectiveness perhaps it would be a lot cheaper and improved safety profile so it's slightly safer, but if uh, yourself, but some of the projects would look to solve some of those problems, right? The one that I have mentioned, but not necessarily weight, uh, since uh, those batteries can be heavier, as well as a uh, problem itself, what you would look to solve within the battery, so we would charge something, right? But potentially that not be <laughs> the best or most optimal solution, right? But depending on what kind of problem you would be looking to solve, in this comprehensive guide, let's take a look at uh, some of the details, some of the challenges, uh, some operations and everything what will require or very brief understanding of what this technology is. Let's start with principles of operation. Sodium ion batteries operate on the same fundamental electronical principles as lithium ion batteries. Uh, they store and release energy throughout the reversible inter collation worn ions into electric materials. In the case of uh, sodium ion batteries uh, are charge carriers, so sodium ions are shutting between the cathodes and another during charging and this so it works exactly the same. In other words, they work exactly the same. It's just the materials used in manufacturing are slightly different. Uh, components of sodium ion batteries that would be cathodes, cathodes uh, at a sodium ion battery typically are made of material capable of accepting sodium ion during the charging process. Common cathodes materials for sodium ion batteries include sodium transition uh, metal oxides, sodium iron phosphate, and sodium uh, manganese oxide. These materials provide different voltage and capability charge uh, when it comes to characteristics, enabling the range of performance and options. Anodes. The anodes is on the other hand responsible for releasing sodium during discharging. It's one of the comprehensive materials like uh, hard carbon, uh, porous carbon or other sodium ion inter calation materials. Uh, the anode materials are designed and provide high sodium storage capabilities. Electrolytes uh, electrolytes in the sodium ion batteries do a component that allows the movement of sodium between the cathodes and anodes. It's usually sodium salt, the solvent and the solvent sodium batteries commonly used in liquid uh, electrolytes. But solid state electrolytes are based research as they could potentially improve safety and energy density. So there's some potential there, I'm not entirely sure, uh, <laughs> it's a new subject for me, but uh, I was trying to understand some of the natural resources on some of the uh, countries out there and what kind of resources those countries might have, uh, since not necessarily all the countries would have necessary resources to produce uh, different uh, end products, right? So it's some of the work while I was doing, but either way, I stumbled on this uh, subject. I'll look into understand a little bit better as well as share some information with others. So, uh, separator. Separator is used to uh, physically separate the cathode and anode in a battery to prevent uh, short circuits or while allowing for movement of sodium ions. It's typically made of 
uh, porous materials that are chemically stable and electrically uh, isolating. So I have seen some of the projects where they have uh, stored some of the batteries or built batteries by shipping containers on uh, and not necessarily in the phone uh, batteries, right? So perhaps some of the use cases, uh, lithium batteries, I'm not entirely sure, right? So this is perhaps worth taking a look at <laughs> myself and understand a little bit better when it comes to uh, shipping containers, storing of energy, perhaps that would be more suitable or cheaper way of doing things instead of perhaps lithium batteries and how it's been done right now. So uh, this is if anything I'm trying to understand on a larger scale. If it's uh, something that's feasible, viable, and over time we can progress into a small <laughs> working our way despite a different way do it. Advantages of sodium batteries. Abundance of sodium. One of the primary advantages of uh, sodium is abundance of uh, it and uh, how much available it can be. It would, uh, if anything, if there would be requirement, try right, to manufacture with the materials, have a source locally. You know, <laughs> it's not that many people have access to, uh, or countries or regions would have access to a lot of resources, right? Sodium in the uh, sixth most abundant elements on Earth, and it's widely distributed in various forms, including seawater, salt, mines, and natural deposits. It, uh, this abundance reduces concerns about resource availability and price volatility. So if anything, uh, that's what, something I'm interested in to understand a little bit better. Cost effectiveness, sodium is more cost effective than lithium both in terms of material cost and extraction processes. As a result of sodium batteries have the potential in to be more economically competitive, especially for long, large scale energy storage applications. So it's, uh, that's what I thought. It's a larger scale, but not necessarily you would have uh, the same output. So that's what I uh, understand. Perhaps the output would be 25% even, so to say less. But it depends on many things. <laughs> Perhaps we're looking about output of energy about 25% less. Safety profile: Sodium ion batteries generally considered safer than lithium batteries. Sodium is less reactive than lithium, and uh, less prone to thermal runways, which can lead to overheating, fires, and explosions in lithium ion batteries. Uh, I, I don't know if that's this information correct, depending on who, who is building those, but uh, how many incidents we had in the past, I don't know if this information is correct. <laughs> the improved safety profile of uh, sodium ion batteries makes it suitable for applications where safety is primarily concerned. Again, so one, uh, sodium people might say <laughs> their project is way better right, than the lithium people. I don't know. I don't know this is the information that I'm reading. Uh, environmental impact. So environmental impact of sodium ion batteries is potentially lower than the of lithium ion batteries. Reduce uh, reliance on lithium, which can have environmental concerns associated with mining and processing. Can be a eco-friendly choice. Moreover, recycling and disposal of sodium batteries may pose fewer environmental challenges. So that's something that I was interested in as well to understand a little bit better. So potentially there's a unique selling point, right? So just to cover those, so it's perhaps more safety, more cost effective, abundance and environmental. So it's something that I understood very well, but it doesn't necessarily better. But when it comes to perhaps other factors, well, on those factors, perhaps <laughs> this technology might perform a little bit better compared to other uh, technologies within the market. Uh, challenges and limitations, which are very important uh, in uh, sharing information to better understand what technology are we talking about. Lower, uh, lower energy density. One of the main challenges with sodium batteries is lower energy density compared to lithium ion batteries. So that would be a limited factor uh, why it's not uh, perhaps been adapted yet. Energy density refers to the amount of energy a battery can store for a given volume of weight. Sodium batteries typically have lower energy density, which can be disadvantages in applications where compact energy storage is critical, such as portable electronics. 
uh, uh, do your own research and trying to understand it as always uh, even uh, some of the research that I have has been doing and while trying to understand if those, that information might not be accurate if anything if you yourself and your team might be interested in solving some of the problems up there uh, when it comes to even this technology uh, even that well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's how much of the world is currently looking for those solutions and how much interest and potential value that you, you yourself you can capture uh, next one would be cycle life. Sodium ion batteries have a shorter cycle life and lower performance uh, compared to lithium batteries. This means that they have not been suitable for applications where long term reliability is crucial. Researchers are actively working on improving the durability and uh, performance of uh, sodium ion batteries to address this limitation. The life cycle, so for, for him, <laughs> which is a big problem, especially when we're talking about very competitive markets, right? Commercial availability, uh, depending, right? So depending on when you are watching his video, I'd say some of the factors. Research and development in this field were still ongoing, and commercial products were limited. The commercialization and scalability of sodium ion batteries was on journeys continue to uh, be areas of uh, active research, so it's currently ongoing. So potentially they might be able to come up with a better way of uh, how to use this technology, right? When it comes to energy storage, so it's an ongoing process, and it's something I'm looking to understand myself a little bit better. Current research and development. Let's identify it. Current areas. So that would be five different areas in which, uh, if anything, we're taking a large project, right? When we're taking a large project, we're breaking down into smaller chunks, so yeah, and making those chunks but potentially easier to understand when it comes to perhaps manufacturing or solving a problem. Those five areas could be cathode materials, anode materials, electrolytes, cell design, and commercialization or widespread adoption. So once it's been proven to work, widespread adoption and perhaps transfer from one technology into another and uh, when it will pick up a speed and actually be way way better compared to existing solutions within the market right so those uh, those are five different areas so without going too much into detail this video is already too long <laughs> uh, currently uh, based on the existing technology there might be some considerations if anything that would be different limitations right so it's different technology compared to lithium batteries as you, we know it right so it's a different technology. So the current applications might be grid energy storage, electric vehicles, so to say, perhaps not necessary, <laughs> but that's an option there. Backup power systems, more likely remote and off-grid applications, as well as industrial use. So we're talking about large batteries, large and perhaps cheaper to manufacture and build, and large <laughs> to make it cost-effective way to do it based on some of the limitations. I have completed a course for people who are interested in developing themselves and becoming more effective when it comes to uh, delivering set targets for yourself, right? Whatever area you might be looking to improve in, I have done this course and identified 12 different areas which I personally believe are very important for everyone to become better, more productive when it comes to accomplishing your goals. Uh, those 12 areas, uh, most of those things haven't been taught in school, uh, <laughs> in public school, I don't know, perhaps <laughs> in different schools, right? But uh, definitely, perhaps in universities, colleges, perhaps they will address some of those areas, but not necessarily in school. Depending where you are, I, would, uh, I have done uh, enough research to understand what are those areas, as well as I'm looking to help as many people as I can with this, uh, within this course. You can find it in the description below as well as top details. Uh, I definitely have this course. I do. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. This is summarize this video that with a further outlook or this, uh, I would say, promising technology, but there's a lot of uh, areas of improvement of this particular. Uh, problems within this technology. Development and commercialization of sodium ion batteries are ongoing and the technologies continue to evolve. Researchers are working to overcome the limitations of 
sodium ion batteries to make them competitive alternative to you. So it's in a way comparing two things, but not necessarily that's the best way to approach it, but perhaps we can improve and build it better, if anything. Uh, now we're comparing it <laughs> to lithium ion batteries, but either way, as the field progresses, we can expect the sodium ion batteries to become more widely available and are applied in a variety of energy storage and uh, transportation applications. So there's potential there, depending, again, again depending on uh, what kind of uh, problem people uh, would be interested in solving. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.